Hi everyone, and welcome to this Critters Tutorial Byte for Oxygen Not Included. As always, make sure to check out the Critters Tutorial Byte if you haven't already, for an overview of the critter and ranching mechanics. In this Critters Tutorial Byte, we're looking at poker shells. These crabby critters have a couple of different uses for lime, lumber or food, but are quite tricky to feed. Naturally, only the base poker shell morph is found on the map in saltwater biomes, but they can lay other morph eggs depending on their surroundings. In total, there are three morphs, the poker shell, and then the two later additions of the oak shell and sunny shell. The poker shell and ochre shell are very similar, and shed their shells twice to produce molts. A small molt is dropped when they mature into an adult critter, and a second normal sized molt is dropped on death. The sunny shell is different, and instead only drops raw shellfish on death, which can be grilled into cooked seafood. It also has a side benefit of removing germs around it, but this is difficult to use practically. All morphs have the same maximum age of 100 cycles, and a livable temperature range of minus 30 to 100 degrees Celsius. They are also all able to be wrangled, so are easily moved around. But beware that poker shells are one of two critters that will attack tubes unprovoked. If an adult poker shell is near a poker shell egg, then it will turn a darker shade of pink and become aggressive, attacking dupes. And beware that if you have a reasonable amount in the same place, they can kill dupes surprisingly quickly. Jumping in then, poker shells are up first, but before we look at the info, it's worth understanding poker shell molts. As I said, this morph will drop a small poker shell molt when maturing, and a poker shell molt on death. These can be used in the rock crusher to make lime, a key ingredient in steel production. That is actually quite useful, as there are only two other ways to make lime. The first is with fossil, which is easily found in oil biomes, but can be limited on some maps, unless using the fossil excavator. And the second is from eggshells, which means ranching another critter, although Paku are excellent for this. The small malt only makes 5 kilograms of lime, and the normal malt makes 10 kilograms, and remember that 10 kilograms of lime is needed per 100 kilograms of steel. As each poker shell takes 6 cycles to lay an egg, this means you could make 100 kilograms of steel every 4 cycles from the malts of one poker shell. The challenge with poker shells and the other morphs is feeding them, and they consume a lot of polluted dirt, which is difficult to get in such large amounts. Making polluted dirt for one poker shell requires two and a half wild arbitraries worth of lumber to be used in an ethanol distiller. One ethanol distiller, supplied by seven wild arbitraries, can feed about three poker shells. I will cover this in the arbitrary tutorial bite, but I would generally say that the polluted dirt is a side benefit of making ethanol, so using any poker shell morph is commonly another side benefit of that process, rather than being the end goal itself. For completeness, there are a few other ways of making polluted dirt, but they are very difficult to do at a large scale sustainably. These being water sieves, rotting food, feeding paku algae, and using outhouses. But if you can feed them, then they are also a useful source of renewable sand, which they excrete. Poker shell egg chances depend on their surroundings, and if kept in ethanol, then ochre shells will be made, and if kept in water, then sunny shells are made. Ochre shells are second up, and work the same as poker shells, but they drop small ochre shell molts and oak shell molts. These are crushed into lumber instead of lime, and the small molt makes 50 kilograms of lumber, and the normal molt 500 kilograms. Arbitries are the other source of lumber, and they drop 1,500 kilograms of lumber every growth cycle. As the trees take 18 cycles to grow when wild, and the ochre shells lay eggs every 6 cycles, this means a fed ochre shell makes the same lumber as just over one wild arbitrary. Again though, the problem is feeding them, and they similarly eat polluted dirt, likely made in the ethanol distiller. By using this polluted dirt output and feeding it to ochre shells, you can basically get about an extra 40% lumber, and then ethanol from the same number of arbitraries, so this is a viable way to increase the output from this cycle. Ochre shells and sunny shells, unlike poker shells, can also eat slime, which can be sustainably produced from puffs, as I explained in the puffed critter tutorial bite. In terms of numbers, 
Repoffs will feed two ochre shells or sunny shells. And sunny shells are last, and are similar to the other morphs, except they drop 4000 kilocalories of raw shellfish on death, not molts. This is the same amount as four Paku, but Paku can be starvation ranched, as I covered in the Paku Critter tutorial bite. With their reproduction rate, a sunny shell could produce 667 kilocalories per cycle on average, so you'd need three sunny shells to feed two dupes. Each sunny shell makes the same amount of food as nine starvation ranched Paku, but the sunny shells must be fed, so personally I would generally prefer using Paku, but this could be viable as a way to get rid of extra polluted dirt. Their other feature is that they can clean germs from liquids, but this is not commonly done, since there are other easier ways to do this, which I explained in the cleaning germs tutorial bite. Ranging poker shells is very easy with a polluted dirt supply, or slime can also be used for ochre shells or sunny shells. This ranch is exactly the same as the hatch ranch, with grooming station, critter feeder and drop off, so make sure to watch the hatch critter tutorial bite if you haven't already. The door and tile keeps the poker shells near the grooming station, and means you only need one auto sweeper and conveyor loader. Like the critters tutorial bite, I've used incubators to refill the ranches when needed, and the overflow room simply receives the eggs and critters, and lets them starve. Remember that they cannot be drowned, and we want them to turn into adults anyway. Here I've used the critter dropper to take extra critters away from the drop off. This traps critters in a door to push them down, and I explain this in detail in the plug slug critter tutorial bite, so see that for more info. Here's a quick reminder of the automation settings for this dropper. An important thing to note is that dupes must not have access to the overflow area, which will likely be full of poker shells and eggs. These angry poker shells will quickly murder any dupes that gets inside, as I showed earlier, so make sure to collect the malts with an auto sweeper and loader. A ranch of eight poker shells, which is the maximum in a 96 tile ranch, will make 1.33 eggs per cycle, and each of these eggs will go on to make 16 kilograms of lime, so this ranch can make a little over 20 kilograms per cycle of lime, for 200 kilograms per cycle of steel. But ranching poker shells is really that easy, as long as the polluted dirt keeps coming. It's probably worth mentioning that if you don't have large scale polluted dirt production, then you can still get a small benefit from keeping poker shells wild, and slowly collecting their malts for free, you may want to put them in the same place, just don't let them get overcrowded or cramped, and beware sending in dupes to collect molts if the adults are protecting their eggs. Moving on to ochre shells and sunny shells then, I would suggest a similar ranch design for the two. This ranch idea isn't very complicated, and has the same buildings as the poker shell ranch, but with a liquid pool of either ethanol or water to influence the egg chances. Unfortunately, doing it this way does mean more auto sweepers, but is otherwise very simple. Again, I would recommend pairing these ranches with incubators and the same critter dropper overflow design. A ranch of eight ochre shells will make just over 700 kilograms of lumber per cycle, enough for just over one ethanol distiller, and a sunny shell ranch, about 8,500 kilocalories per cycle of cooked seafood. So here's a quick one take reference for these three ranches. The last thing to touch on is cleaning germs with sunny shells. As I mentioned, there are certainly easier ways to do this, for example with radiation or chlorine, or even just not cleaning it at all and using germy water for non-food uses. But if you really wanted to do this, then you can put sunny shells in dirty water and they will slowly kill the germs. Do beware though that to make sunny shells requires water, not polluted water, so you may wish to convert any polluted water to normal water first. And as poker shell morphs are so simple to ranch, that's all I need to cover. I hope this helps you tame these crabby little critters, and thanks for watching.